Hello everybody, Driver Ray here, and welcome to the first video in a new series in which I'll be reviewing HO scale models. Now the first car we have here is a brand new Procore 50H20 by Rapido Trains. You can see it says Procore 5720, it's a typo, but you get the idea of what they're trying to get here. Now this is the first run of this car, and it was announced, I believe, in July of 2021. And now these cars are starting to hit the stores at the beginning of November 2022. So I got this model from Lanco Trains for around $45, including tax. I'll put a link to him down in the description. I highly recommend you check his store out. I don't know if he's included these specific cars online yet, but uh, I think they're going to go up pretty soon, so just keep an eye out for that. These cars are originally intended to carry plastic pellets, and plastic pellet hoppers are one of the most common types of covered hopper you'll see. You can usually spot them because they're pretty long and they're generally painted gray. And it's nice to have another model of NHO scale because before this, we've only had the Atlas 5701 and 5800 ACF center flow hoppers, which already are pretty similar cars. And Walters, a few years ago, did the 6200, an NSC car. And there's many variations of these cars in real life. So the more variations, the better, I think. Now you might be wondering, how does this differ from the scale trains 5820 they announced? Well, the scale trains car is actually a Pullman standard, so it's the same capacity, but the design is completely different other than the fact that it's got this you know, these flat rib sides which are common on these cars but this is a completely different model it's nothing to do with the scale trains model and it's nice that we have two variants of similar cars though so it'll add a lot of variety to HO scale consists before i open this model i do want to discuss more about the prototype now these all these 5820s were built by procore originally and there's two roads that bought them so we have unpx and dclx unpx being procore's reporting mark they built them for themselves and DCLX is Dow Chemical. And in this run, we get three road name choices. We get UNPX, like I mentioned. We get a few variations of them. We get some with subleasing logos on them, like BF Goodrich. And we get a blank one and some other different variations of that. And then we have the DCLX one. But they also included a third road here, EHSX, which stands for SX Hybrid Seed. And these are interesting because they don't actually carry plastic pellets, but they carry bird seed in them. Additionally, these are probably the most modern cars in the run. So if you're, you know, a post-2008 model or a new model, the FRA224 era, these cars will fit perfectly right in with your layout. The Procore cars are common as well, but they are becoming more rare nowadays, and you might have to do some modifications to them, like add these uh, reflective tapes, which you can actually buy from Smokebox Graphics. It's a really handy tool to, you know, modernize freight cars. I went ahead and picked up EHSX123054 here, which is a former Procore car. You can tell because you can see the spot where the Procore logo used to be. This particular car was built in 1984, and all of these 5820s were built between 1977 to 1991 by Procore at their Oakville plant. And these Essex cars are managed out of Windsor, Ontario, and they have 80 of them in service as of right now. This car would be a good choice to run in manifest trains to add some variety, as they can be seen all over North America. In fact, I've even seen them in my local town here in Pennsylvania, so they certainly get around. But now I think it's time to free this car from its plastic prison. It comes in this nice um, plastic sheet here to keep it safe, which I like. I think they took some good care in designing this box. Here we have the actual box. So here's everything you get in the box. We have this literature here which talks about the car. It's pretty nice. We've got some replacement roof patches here, which I'll get into later. And we've got a nice Perpito train sticker. Now let's look at the actual car, I'll just unsnap it from this clamshell style box. Just have to very carefully out. And one of the things you want to do when you handle delicate models is try and avoid touching the sides as your finger oils could mess them up. I find it easiest just to use the index finger and the thumb and kind of grab it in a you know, inauspicious area. So now that the car is out of the box, let's look at the details up close here. So let's start from the roof and let's work our way down. 
So first things first, we have some very nice etched metal roof walks here. And I think these look very good, and I really appreciate the time they went to make these. Now, the tops of the freight cars are the first things that most people see, and it's the thing people see the most. So having the top of the car look good is, is pretty crucial, I think. And I think they knocked this out of the park. You can see that these hatches here, they're very, very fine. Um, they, they just molded them very well, and they look very accurate. You've got these nice ridges on the roof, and just the roof alone looks very superb. I'm very impressed with this car. Now let's take a look at the side of the car. So let's start on the left side and work our way across. On the left side here, we've got the patching. Um, the patching is not printed on like evenly. So it kind of looks like someone rollered it with their hand. It looks pretty accurate and it definitely doesn't look, you know, it just doesn't look fake or anything, which I really like. I really like patched cars and I think they did a good job in patching this car. Got the data down here for like the low limit, the lightweight, and we've got to think it's supposed to be the painted date, maybe 1998, I'm not really sure. And moving over, we've got some data right here. It's all very legible. Even this small lettering down here, it's very legible. It looks really good. And on the end, we've got a loop stencil. We've got some more data. And it's all very legible. And even as fine as it is, I think it came out very nicely. Now the physical detailing, these ribs look very sharp and very crisp. I like that. The bottom sill here also looks very nice. The jacking pad, the end ladders, I think it came out very well. This is well worth $45. Now moving over to the AN, we can see more of what appears to be the maybe brass details here with the brake hoses and we have it's like ladders. They all look very fine, very sharp, and I think it it gives a good representation of this car. The crossover platform here is etched metal. We do have a coupler. I don't think it's a KD, but it looks like it should be compatible with them, and it looks very sturdy, so I appreciate that. Got a separately applied air hose, and we've got a separately applied grab iron. Which nice details to add, because it saves you time if you want to add them. Um, we've got some brass stirrups here. Again, it all looks very sharp and very crisp. Looking at the other side of the car, we have the same details as before. And there doesn't seem to be any errors with this car. They just print them out pretty nicely, I see. And here you have the B end here, which it has all the air reservoirs and the brake cylinder on it back behind this end cage, as well as the brake wheel. Again, it all came out very nicely. It's nice that the detail is there, and it looks good. So it's a double whammy, and it's what you'd expect for a model from Rapido. Now, I do want to bring in another car, one of my favorite personal HO skill models, Tangent's 4750, a Pullman standard car here. I think this is one of the best cars ever made in Ojo scale, and we can compare them side by side. And I think I think um, Rapido has them matched here. The brake wheel looks very good, almost looks better on Rapido. You know, they have all the same details that, that Tangent does, and this is also a bigger car, so you're getting more for your money, I think. That's a pretty crucial detail. Both these cars are fantastic, but I think this illustration of a side by side here really shows the amount of detail that Rapido went through when they made this car. Now I want to flip the car around to the underside here. You can see we have our outlet gates. Um, they're very fine, look very good. You won't notice any problems with them. The bays here, they kind of come in past the outside of the sill. I like that a lot. Some cars skip that, especially cars that have low sills and it just doesn't look good. So they made it look good here. From a ground level, it should look great in photos. These trucks are very nicely done. They don't have spinning bearing caps, but I don't think that's a big deal. In fact, cars run better without spinning bearing caps. And it's really just about the personal preference. And these trucks are perfectly fine representations of what you need on a car like this. Now, the next thing I want to do is place this car on some track and see how well it rolls. Yeah, now those hitting issues, it rolls just fine. And there is a slight bit of body bubble, but that's pretty easy to fix and probably doesn't affect all cars. So not a big issue there. And as far as these couplers, I can test them out while I'm here. Couples of just fine to a KD equipped car, so if you run KD couplers, this car is perfectly fine out of the box. So here you have it, the Rapido Trains Procore 50 h one covered hopper. And I have to say, I really like this car. We really needed more large covered hoppers in HO skill, and this car is a perfect addition to the roster. Additionally, even though this is the first run, the road name choices are pretty good and they can serve anyone from who models 1980s to today. In fact, most of the cars that are 
ran probably still run today especially these cars right here so i think if you're looking for a car for your ho scale layout whether it be a plastic pellet car or a seed car i would recommend you take a look at these cars it's pretty clear they did their homework when developing this model and compared to the older plastic pellet hoppers like the walters car i mentioned earlier this blows it out of the water we really need a better version of the nsc car but maybe in the future we'll have to see if i had to list pros and cons i would say the pros of the car definitely are the detailing and the options i like how they included spare roof hatches so you can change your car to be more personalized or to match prototype photos i like the details like the brass grab irons and the roof walk and the wheels look very good this car won't need much upgrades if you want to run it however i'll throw up some photos of the real one two three zero five four i think it does need some weathering but that's not really something that pedo's fault so this should be a pretty easy canvas to upgrade i think so in closing, this is a solid addition to the HO scale rolling stock fleet. It can find uses on many different layouts, and it's got plenty of potential for upgrade and also future runs, so I'd keep an eye out for these later on, because I'm sure it'll do a second run. But I would definitely recommend you take a look at this car if it fits within your budget. It's a great representation of one of these cars, and it's definitely something we need more of in HO scale, so I appreciate that Rapido took the time to make this car. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Driver 8. Like, subscribe, comment. Let me know your thoughts on this car, if you agree, disagree, and I'll see you in the next review. And all of these cars are built between 1977 to 1991 at Procore's.